There is something I got to ask you because a lot of our patients are, and people that listen to this are dealing with chronic diseases and something that you dealt with that a large portion of our population deals with is Lyme disease. And somehow Lyme and mold go hand in hand. You see it over and over. Patients sometimes get mold diagnosis, get Lyme diagnosis, get, you know, it's a back and forth and you're treating one or the other shoemaker protocol. And then you're going on high doses of antibiotics and you just go in circles and get worse oftentimes. What is it about that connection that you find that you actually do have mold patients, Lyme patients, Lyme patients, mold patients? You know, I mean, it's, it's, it, it is to some degree a mystery. Um, it, it's, it's clear that biotoxins uh, are, are the, are the are the issue and the inability for the for the body to naturally process them and detoxify naturally, um, and 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 that seems to be the Venn diagram. Hmm. It seems to be that that's that's largely where. So so you know Schumacher. I've got a lot of issues with Schumacher, um, uh, and and he and I have had many public debates about a lot of things. Um, but and he, but what he did act, what he did do well was that. Was he honed in on that? Was that it's biotoxin related? What he did not do well was say there's a one size fits all approach mm -hmm. uh, because that's not true. There's, that's never been true in medicine. Uh, it's not true in almost anything. Uh, and so he's got a very didactic approach with that kind of stuff. Uh, and so, so that's where, you know, the beginning and the end. The other thing he actually, by the way, also said recently, which I really agree with, is actinomyces, which are a, a kind of um, bacteria, rod-shaped bacteria that grows alongside of um, water damage, uh, mold and water damage buildings, but isn't often tested for. Uh, and all, also is a producer of major, uh, major chemical producer. In fact, two-thirds of the antibiotics that we produce in, our, in, in the world are produced from actinomyces, not from mold. Uh, so this is this is a blind spot also in the testing protocols that are that are uh, that are commonplace. And so we're actually working on a DNA based test to to, to knock army out of the box. Uh, it, uh, it 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 looks at all known microbes, uh, including actinomyces, uh, for the same cost as an army, which looks for thirty six. Um, so orders of magnitude, and not even it's logarithmic. Uh, it's just yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So um, so the 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 lime thing and the mold thing uh, tends to be, I think. Uh, the biotoxin overlap. Um, what's also fascinating is that, you know, you end up with chronic fatigue, the fibromyalgia, uh, all of these other sort of nebulous uh, illnesses that fall. And what I what I see, and Lyme is, is different because Lyme is clearly an infection, uh, these other diseases, what I see the mold does, or even poor air quality does, is it brings out the latent uh, symptoms that are already there. In other words, the latent diseases that you may already have under the, under the, under the uh, surface. And it happened to me, right? So all that stuff came up. And then as soon as I got the environment under control and I went on a no sugar, no grains diet, by the way, because a lot of mo most mycotoxin exposure is food food based. Mm -hmm. um, and and so people don't want to hear about that. You talk about, don't talk about religion, politics, or my food, <laughs> yeah. right? Like those, are, <laughs> that's, that's, don't tell me I got to change my diet because- Especially when it's the coffee, right? That That is like <laughs> totally off. You know, like don't ever tell me not to drink my coffee <laughs> or my carbs. Don't get all, don't tell me I got to drop my carbs because that's what it. am I going to do? It's the only thing I've got in this world is I got my, well, my, my booze, my coffee and my carbs. That's it. Right. Exactly. Like I'm, don't, don't tell me donuts. I can't have my wine, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and so you, what I see, what I see happen consistently is that this, this is, this is the, this is the, 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 the problem that most people face. And I also think that a lot of times with Lyme, what happens is, Lyme people end up spending a lot of time indoors. Mm -hmm. If they've got a mold or a moisture problem, they're hyper exposed. And so, you know, th th this comes down to get out of the house. This comes down to 20,000 doses a day. What are you dosing? Are you dosing 20,000 20, sips of, of outdoor, highly biodiverse air with, you know, lots and lots of exposure to a wide variety of microbes? Uh, where you're getting maybe a little bit of musty smell here, these micro, microbial gases here and there, because that's the way a forest smells, but you're not literally inhaling it constantly as if you're living over a compost heap, right? There's these, this is the difference, right? I mean, think about mold growth as compost. You are living in a compost bin if you just continue to let it go. And, and, and you're inhaling that. How is that going to How is that going to end well, right? Your immune system is going to say, hey, man, I'm going to shut down for a little while here. My sinuses are going to close, right? Sinusitis. <laughs> my rest, my, my, my lungs are going to close, the asthma, right? Everything goes, this is, this is the body protecting itself. So, so the, 
the I think that a lot of what we see when, when it comes to the exacerbation of illnesses is that mold tends to make people fatigued and they tend to not leave the house. And then that just amplifies everything. And Lyme is no exception. People are bedridden. Yeah. Um, and if they don't have their air quality straight in their home, and by the way, a lot of times these people are also met, they've they've lost their cog- a lot of their decision making. They're not maintaining the building well, yeah. right? There's a socioeconomic component to this. Uh, there's a there's a psychiatric component to this. Um, in fact, I'm working with a psychiatric clinic that has like 400 new patients a month, and they're finding inflammation in every single intake. Um, and so they believe that mold or air quality is a is a is an underlying cause in many of these psychiatric cases such that some of these uh, doctors I'm talking to in that world are now referring to depression as a, as, a, as an inflammatory disease. Hmm. Rightfully so. It's fascinating stuff. And, it, and it, what's, what's gratifying is that it's emerging. The, the conversations we're having here today are the conversations that need to be had at scale, right? Uh, because, because this is, this is not, it, it, should be, it should be out there. This is the one thing, you know, that all people do. Right. We all breathe air. We all live in buildings, you know? And so like, this is, this is like the, the basics. This is foundational. This is table stakes. You're born into this planet. You should, you should be able to understand how to navigate living in buildings and breathing air. Yeah. And then what it takes to optimize that. And so that's the mission that we're on. Yeah, no, this conversation, and I hope this is doing it for others, really change your perspective. You know, you, your home is an extension of you in some ways. As the home, so the body. As above, so below sort of thing goes goes hand in hand here. That's and right. y- you, we seem to hyper-focus singularly on the body, you know, as if it doesn't take things in and give things off itself, just as the house will give off EOC, this and that. And then at the end of the day also, you you make this great case for you know, you're, you're going to take these 20,000 or so breaths. Why not take some in the greatest type of environment, which is outdoors? Reconnect with nature. Yes, optimize your home, no doubt about it, but still know that nature is the ultimate healer in all mm. of this. And nature is mycotoxins, mold, all of this. So let's not just demonize that and say, that's your problem. That's right. So it really does shift the perspective on everything. And I, I think this has been a really, really enlightening one as far as just understanding that you do have power to do things about things, you just got to do them right. Whether it's the testing, whether it's how you address it, the dampness versus the mold, you know, kind of which one and, and address all these things. 